What's up, everybody? I'm Tim Ross. Welcome to the B-Side, people. I couldn't believe how bad the church has treated men and women that have gone through a divorce. It's not the unpardonable sin. It's not. They didn't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. When bad behavior continues on and on, destroying That's not only the spouse, but the children, you, you don't think God wants you to change that situation? People in the pulpit that are in a marriage, but then they have all this hidden sin where they are having affairs with women in the church. And, it's and men. Such a, yeah, it's... I want to drill into something that the church, for some reason, won't be honest about, mm -hmm. won't acknowledge, won't yeah. um, won't talk about without there being some kind of either judgmentalism in their voice or trepidation in their voice. Or a misrepresentation of scripture. Or a misrepresentation of scripture. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and it's the D word. Yep. It's word. divorce. Right. You know, I really had no context for this mm -hmm. because when Marcus graduated to heaven, we were about to celebrate 40 years of marriage, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, as you know, in the previous hour, we talked about how the Lord brought a man into my life, but he had gone through a divorce. Right. And um, immediately in our relationship, I brought uh, Jimmy Evans in. Mm -hmm. And so he kind of walked with us through it. But this is what I found out. Tim is how bad the church treats divorced people. Oh, absolutely correct. And so um, I remember when we introduced my now husband, Dr. Doug Weiss, to our audience, mm -hmm. we were engaged and mm -hmm. I had to tell the audience. You're right. And so I brought Jimmy in mm -hmm. and he kind of went through, hey, I went through the process with Joni. Yeah. And um, there was no adultery yeah. on either side. Right. He, I remember, but he sat down and he said, but you know, Joni, he said, sitting across from broken people for 40 years, and I used to have that narrow view, well, you can't get a divorce unless it's adultery. And he said, but then the Lord began to take him in, into other parts in the New Testament, it were Paul's writings, and also some of the rabbinical uh, teaching in the Old Testament about marriage and divorce. And he said, um, the Lord began to show him that there are actually four A's. Mm -hmm. He said there's abuse that can be excessive, Correct. dangerous. Yep. There can be addictions. Correct. There can be abandonment. Correct. Which is almost like spiritual adultery. Yep. And then there's adultery. That's correct. And um, I remember he said, I, I talked to Doug, and I'm not going to get into to the details of what he went through, but Jimmy said... Doug had a biblical reason mm -hmm. for being divorced. Mm -hmm. And he said, I went through that. And he said, one of the things I look for is damage. Mm -hmm. And he said, when I see damage, you ask yourself the question, does God want someone to be damaged and to stay in a damaged relationship? And he said, no. Yeah. And so I could not believe how many people responded from the body of Christ yep. that said, I sat here with tears rolling down my face because that was my situation. But my pastor told me there's been no adultery. It doesn't mean that just because he's beating you up every night and you've got a black eye um, that you can divorce him. He hasn't committed adultery. You must stay in the marriage. And so, I, I mean, there were scads of stories like that, and I couldn't believe how bad the church has treated men and women that have gone through a divorce, right or wrong, let's just say, Tim, they shouldn't have divorced. It's not the unpardonable sin. It's not. They didn't blaspheme the Holy Spirit. No. Girl, okay, okay, okay. I got to say something real quick. Go. Because my brain is like on fire and I want to swing on something. So, so, uh, numero uno. <laughs> to say that this person hasn't committed adultery, but there's physical abuse right. or spiritual abuse or emotional abuse or emotional abuse. Yeah. If, if marriage is a type and shadow of Christ and his bride, mm -hmm. who did Jesus beat up? Mm. He'll never leave you or forsake you. Okay, cool. Who did, who did he beat up though? Did he give Peter a black eye when he denied him? Mm. Did he hang Judas? Right. Did, did he slap, uh, uh, Dalton Thomas in the face for not believing? Mm -hmm. No, he didn't respond like that. So, 
if 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 we if our physical marriage is a type and shadow of Christ and his bride, if there's abuse taking place, this misrepresents the actuality of Christ mm-hmm. and his bride. Because by the time Marcus passed away, you know, we're a worldwide platform. Of course. And so you've got the, you know, secular networks that are giving their commentary on what happened. It wasn't true. Mm-hmm. And so I thought, you know what, I'm going to tell the story. Yeah. And uh, But then when I told that story, it's like the Lord said, you know, you need to share some of your other more private storms. Mm. And um, in doing so, uh, you're going to help people. Mm. And so I just decided to share some of those stories. And like you said, be vulnerable yep. and um, let people know that, hey, you're either about to go in a storm, hmm. you're in the middle of a storm, or you're coming out of a storm yep. because in life we're going to go through storms. That's correct. And, um, but the key is who's going with you mm. and can you hold on to his hand through yep. it? Absolutely. And if you can, you're going to come out on the other side better, even yep. though right now it feels like there's no way it could be better. Yeah. But I found that to be true time and time and time again over the last 40 years, building a network and going through personal um, issues in, in, you know, with my marriage and then uh, losing Marcus and then all of a sudden becoming the head of Daystar thing. I would, n- I never thought I would be in this seat. Yeah, for sure. And so um, just to, you know, navigate all of those things. But I think, you know, what really helped me navigate, navigate that last storm was just all the faithfulness of the previous storms. And there were a lot. And there's no one that does what we do, Tim, that don't have storms, that don't have life experiences that they can share to help people. And and really, that was my motivation. Yeah. And um, so I did it, and it was just amazing how many it resonated with so many people. All right, so you already gave me way too much right there. Here like, we go. <laughs> so, so first of all, I'm, I'm resonating. I, I love the word graduation mm-hmm. for yeah. Marcus. Yeah. Um, we just celebrated my dad's life. Right. And I had all these words, but graduation wasn't one of them. And so I'm grateful for his yeah. graduation. Yeah. And he graduated. Uh, he did graduate. He finished. He finished. And he did finish. He left us with nothing left to do. Like that yeah. was actually my, the eulogy for for him that day yeah. was there was nothing left to do. Yeah. And um with that graduation came more responsibility for you though. Mhm. And you just talked about it. Um I see everything in pictures, Joni. So when you said, I, I wanted to set the record straight on this, and then God started showing me, well, talk about this storm as well. Mm-hmm. What I saw in my, in my mind's eye was you pulling on a thread mm-hmm. of a sweater and yeah. just thinking that was going to come off, and it just kept <laughs> going around. Yeah. And so, so as you started doing this, yeah. were you surprised at what you recollected? Cause, cause when you mm-hmm. forty years of ministry, yeah, sometimes it can for some people it can feel mm-hmm. like one big storm, yeah. right? They can't remember yeah. any good days or whatever. Yeah, I was and, five years old when I started. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you are a child prodigy. <laughs> <laughs> they went to kindergarten. I started ministry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. But I told Juliet, yeah. my goal is to make it to ninety three. Yeah. Just so she's too old to remarry. <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I'm literally just trying to live long enough because she's so dang cute. She is. I'm just trying to live she's long enough that she can't remarry. There are 93 so this year is olds selfish. out there. Though. Like I'm eating greens <laughs> and baking stuff and not eating fried foods. Yeah. Not because I want to be healthy. Right. I just want to outlive any dude that tries to get in line <laughs> for my wife. I gotcha. Greedy as all get out. Um. But you did that. You accepted God's will mm-hmm. for Marcus's life and yours. Mm-hmm. And it led to some joy. It did. <laughs> that's, the, that's the best part of the book, I think. Well, the best part is for people to understand that God is going to walk you through the storm. Yep. He's going to be faithful. And you look at the things that you know about God, mm-hmm. okay? You and I know he's good. Very. We know he's faithful. Very. We know that he loves us. Very much. And 
we know that we have a record with the things that he's done in our life and the times that he's answered prayer and so on and so forth. So I would remind myself of that. But anyway, about the seventh, eighth month, uh, God brought an incredible man into my life. He wasn't looking. I wasn't looking. And um, he had gone through a divorce and had worked really, really long and hard to try to make a marriage work. That didn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's another whole show. Mm -hmm. He can tell you that story. Yep. But um, (laughs) anyway, he was actually, uh, his program was starting on Daystar. Mm -hmm. And because he had been a marriage counselor and had been a counselor for 35 years, and Marcus and I had actually interviewed him, but he was just a guest in and out, in and out, never like anything except just a guest. Yeah. And um, he was giving me a courtesy call because he said, um, my show's about to start Mm -hmm. on Daystar. And he said, I know that you don't know this. And he said, I want to do the right thing and let you know that I have gone through a divorce. Mm -hmm. And um, first thing I said, I'm so sorry, you Mm -hmm. know, to hear that because we're for marriage. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. And um, he said, I didn't know if it would preclude Mm -hmm. me from coming on the network Mm -hmm. or if that would, you know, be a deterrent. And I was like... I know you're a godly man and you're a man of character. And uh, over time, he said, there's, you know, I said, is there any way, you know, that could save the marriage? <laughs> Obviously, he'd been trying to do that for years. And yep. he just said, there's just a lot you don't know about to the story. Yeah. So um, we started talking and mainly like friends, yeah. right? And um, but then I started getting a text and I kind of liked seeing the text come up. And mm-hmm. I'm thinking, what, Lord, what are you doing? And then... How did that feel? Oh, I, I didn't think I could feel like that again. Because you told Marcus, you're like, I'm, I can't do... I'm I not, know. It was inconceivable. I and I think that's... It's, it's really good for us to like never say never. Never say never. And you just... You know, we think that we know that we know things we don't know. <laughs> okay. Say it again, Joni. I we said, we think, think we know... Things that we know that we don't know. I got you. And so I was, you know, pretty sure that I'm independent and strong and that there's just no way I would want to be married to anybody else. Yep. But there were several prophetic people. Hubie Sin, I remember he was one of the ones that had prophesied to Jonathan Kahn. And he said, um, he called me and said, the, the Lord's going to put your heart back together. And mm. there's some surprises coming. Mm. Remember, Drenda Cassie was on the show with me, her and her husband, Pastor great church. And she said, the Lord spoke to me three days ago that he's going to bring someone in your life for you not to be afraid, open up your heart. So there were like, um, confirmations, yeah. you know, and, uh, I was just like, well, Lord, if you bring somebody, you're going to have to do it. Yeah. You picked Marcus. Yeah, I'm not sure. picking. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And there's too much at stake here. Right. And, um, and so finally we ended up meeting and, um, I, uh, didn't know, like, you can talk to someone FaceTime, but you don't know. Yeah, for sure. Until. You don't know till you know. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and so um, we were going to just meet, and um, when we came together and, and met, we'd probably had about 60 hours of conversation. Wow. Because, you know, I interview people like you, so I had a lot of questions. And he's a, That's he's the a, longest he, pre-interview screening ever. He's a counselor. <laughs> so he had a lot of questions, but... Um, we met for that one weekend, and um, and it was all good, good boundaries, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, I remember, because he lives in Colorado, so okay. I dropped him at the airport and went back home, and I got in the pool that night. It was like August, really hot here in Dallas. I was just laying in the pool in that quiet house mm-hmm. <laughs> alone. Yeah. And I just said, God, if this is you, um, I feel like it is, but I don't want to make a mistake. I think the first thing I said is I'm your girl. Mm. I am your girl. I've always mm. been your girl. Mm. And I need to know if this isn't you, yep. I need you to show me now because yep. I don't need to go any further. Yeah, for sure. So that was on a Sunday night. And so the next morning I tell the story in the book, I came in and doing the hair and makeup, getting ready for the live show. And my security guy comes in, Shannon Kelly, and he's he's never done this before. And he comes over and he says, ma'am, I had a dream about you last night. And I said, okay, tell me the dream. We, we have spiritual dreams. We hear them all the time, you yeah. know, no big deal. He said, well, it's private. I said, okay. And so I get up out of the chair, go into the green room. 
I said, tell me the dream. He said, well, in the dream, I'm walking in front of you, but you have someone beside you. And I can tell it's a man, but his face was blurred. I couldn't see his face, but y'all were laughing and you were holding hands. I knew you were together. He said, <clears throat> I think God's bringing a man into your life. Now, he knows no, nobody knows anything about anything. And this is the security guard. This is security, the head <laughs> of security. The prophet, not the prophetic no. voice that you're no, about which, to interview. <laughs> which brought more legitimacy to it. <laughs> exactly. Because so, he ain't getting nothing. No. And so he goes, um, I said, so you didn't see his face? He said, no, I didn't see his face. He said, but I heard his laugh. Mm. Well, the man that I was with has a very unusual laugh, and it would became kind of like a joke at Daystar because it was a laugh that would continue, very deep laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would think, is he ever going to stop laughing? It just kept going on and on. And so he says, oh, um, one of those he said, um, when he said that, I'm thinking, oh my goodness. And so I said, so you recognize his laugh? He said, yeah. And he, I said, well, who was it? And he said, it was Dr. Doug Wise. Wow. And I almost fainted. You know, I have the little cape on. Yeah, and I almost yeah, yeah, fainted, yeah. but I didn't give it away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were like, mm, I was just like, mm, interesting. And thanks I, a lot, But guy. inside I'm going, oh, my God. <laughs> so, so, I, so um, Threads is like bootleg Twitter. Um, and so uh, is it is it okay to say that? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so so um, Instagram's version of Twitter. And so... I like going there because there's no pictures and nothing's moving. And because I'm, I'm a wordsmith and I love words, yeah, I yeah. get to just live with words yeah. and read other people's. So I'm like just kind of mindlessly scrolling through. Right, right. Can be dangerous. Can be dangerous. <laughs> and the algorithm brought me somebody that hated me. And basically we're saying like, I think this dude is an apostate. Like he's into, you know, he's giving apostasy is yeah, what they say. Yeah. And because my daddy had just died, it just caught me. Like, it usually yeah. doesn't catch me, but it just caught me. And I responded to the person mm -hmm. um, publicly. It wasn't like a direct message or anything, but I was like, that hurt my feelings. And usually I'm more resilient. But my daddy <laughs> just died, and so you hurt my feelings. That's right. And um, I was like, I don't even, you know, um, I would just ask you to pray for me, right? Well, because I'm... I was going to be a homicide detective, and so that thing is that that guy is still in me. I went back to their Instagram and and then got ready to give them a direct message, and saw that last year they had left a voice note commending the content. Oh. And so I, out of curiosity, just wrote and said, "Can you tell me what changed? I would love to have a conversation with you." And I left this person my number. And I didn't know if they were going to respond or anything, but they responded. They said, I would love to have a conversation with you. Long story short, I gained a sibling from that conversation. Wow. I gained a sibling. God turned it around. From that conversation. Yeah. They literally was like, let me tell you the heart space I was in. Yeah. I really shouldn't have said that because I don't know you. And usually there is something there. There's a root of something and That's you right. hit a little trigger and it's not even about you. That's right. <laughs> and so at the end of our conversation, I was like, can I clone you? Because can you like go be an evangelist on how to like directly go to your brother and sister when you have an offense against them or when they trigger you or whatever? Yeah, yeah. And so um, that was a sweet moment. I yeah. wish everyone was like that. They're not, but it would be awesome. They're not, and it's okay. It is okay. It, it's that okay. part. It's it okay. is okay. It's okay. Yep. Hey, what's it, up, everybody? I'm so grateful that you are enjoying this free content on YouTube. But don't forget to press B with me, and let's let whatever going to be just be. The B-Side app is waiting for you to come home. Peace. <laughs>